opera cake is an impressive dessert to say the least. And this version puts a little twist on the classic by using chai instead of coffee. If I've piqued your interest, keep watching to learn how to make your own. First, we're making our own pistachio flour by finely grinding whole roasted pistachios in a food processor. Once a good portion is finely ground, sift into a bowl that continue grinding the other pieces until you have one cup of pistachio flour. Set the flour aside while you move on to the next step. To make the crispy feuilletine, combine equal amounts of all-purpose flour and powdered sugar in a medium bowl. Next, pour in two tablespoons of plain yogurt followed by two tablespoons of melted butter. Mix until you have a smooth, creamy batter. When baked, this will add a crunchy textural element to the cake. Spread it out as thinly as possible on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. The easiest way to do this is to use a bench scraper. Bake in a preheated 340 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes until brown and crispy. Allow to cool completely, then separate from the parchment paper and break the sheet into pieces that will fit inside a food processor. Pulverize the pieces until they are a fine crumb, then transfer to a bowl or container with a lid, cover, and set aside for later. Okay, now for the sponge cake. Combine one cup of milk with one tablespoon of vinegar to make an easy buttermilk substitute. Of course, if you have buttermilk, you can just use that. Leave the milk and vinegar to sit for about five minutes. Meanwhile, in a large bowl, add one cup of your pistachio flour, then sift in powdered sugar, baking powder, baking soda, and salt. It's always a good idea to sift your dry ingredients for cakes because it helps ensure there are no big lumps in the batter. Once that's all combined, set the bowl aside and in a new bowl, mix together a quarter cup of plain yogurt with two tablespoons of melted butter. Next, you're going to gradually add the milk and the dry mix into the butter and yogurt. Mix after each batch you add until everything is combined. Finally, sift in half a cup of cake flour, which contains less protein than all-purpose or plain flour, meaning that less gluten will form. Once the batter is well combined, transfer to a greased and lined 9.5 by 13 inch sheet tray. You can easily spread the batter out by lifting and gently rotating the tray so the batter reaches all the corners of the pan. Once it's evenly spread out, bake at 390 Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes. Then allow to cool completely before flipping onto a cutting board and carefully removing the parchment paper. You can see here why the parchment paper is necessary. Imagine having to try to scrape off cooked cake from the sheet tray. Cut the cake into three even slices, then set aside. Now to make the chai syrup, which you could also make while the cake bakes. Add water, a cinnamon stick, four cardamom pods cut in half, one star anise, four whole cloves, 10 to 15 fennel seeds, three large slices of fresh ginger, and two tablespoons of sugar to a saucepan. Turn the heat to medium high and bring the mixture up to a simmer. Cook for 10 to 15 minutes to infuse the flavors, making your house smell amazing. Finally, add two tablespoons of black tea leaves and cook for another five minutes. We're only interested in the infused syrup, so strain through a sieve, discard the spices, and save the syrup for later. Now on to the next step, which you might have noticed there are a lot of. Melt semi-sweet chocolate in a double boiler over recently simmering hot water. Once fully melted, remove from the heat, then pour in those crispy bits we made earlier. Mix well, then spread evenly over one portion of the cake. If you're new to our channel, hello and welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. We post a new recipe every day. Okay, now back to the cake. Cover the chocolate coated cake piece with parchment paper and chill while you make the next component, which is the chai buttercream frosting. Whip softened unsalted butter with an electric mixer or whisk until light and fluffy. Pour in a third of a cup of sweetened condensed milk, followed by two tablespoons of the chai syrup. Then mix again until fluffy. There's only one more component to make before we can assemble. It's just a simple chocolate ganache, which you can make by pouring hot heavy cream over semi-sweet chocolate pieces. The heat from the cream gently melts the chocolate, resulting in a silky smooth chocolate mixture. Cover and chill for 30 minutes to firm up. Now that it's thickened slightly, we need to fluff it up again with an electric mixer so it's easier to spread. Remove the chocolate coated portion of cake from the fridge. By now the chocolate should be firm enough that you can flip the cake over so the chocolate is on the bottom. Now brush on a layer of the chai syrup. This is going to soak into the cake, making it flavorful and moist at the same time. Add half the buttercream and spread it out evenly. Don't worry too much about getting it perfectly to the edge though. You'll see why later. Place the second piece of cake on top and brush on another layer of the chai syrup. It's best to use a kind of dab and brush motion to get an even layer. Top with the chocolate ganache and spread it out evenly like you did the buttercream. You can use a knife or spatula for this, but if you do a lot of baking, you might want to get yourself an offset spatula like this. It makes spreading so much easier. For the final layer, repeat the routine with the chai syrup, followed by the other half of the buttercream frosting spread out evenly. 
Now this needs to chill in the fridge for 30 minutes. When it's nearly done chilling, make a chocolate glaze by melting dark chocolate chips in a double boiler over recently simmering water. It's best to do this with the stove turned off so as to not scald the chocolate. Once the chocolate is mostly melted, pour in one tablespoon of neutral oil. This is just going to help keep it pliable when chilled. Pour the chocolate glaze over your chilled cake, placed on a cooling rack over a cookie sheet for easy cleanup. Now carefully spread it out trying to get as even a layer as possible without dripping too much down the sides. This might be the most satisfying part of the whole process. Chill for 15 minutes to allow the chocolate glaze to firm up a bit. And here's why you don't need to worry so much about the edges. To make the cake look really professional, slice off about half an inch from all sides. Feel free to eat these pieces as a reward for your hard work. Finally, decorate however you like. We just did a simple line of gold luster dust along the edge and the cake was complete. This might be my favorite recipe we've ever made. It was decadent, slightly spicy from the chai, and the crispy chocolate layer on the bottom added a lovely contrast in texture. It might take a while, but I promise you, this cake is worth trying.